Hi, I'm Paul Ashman with Manic Salamander. Today we're going to show you how to install the bolt-on style bar end weights. Let's start by opening up the package full of hardware. Here's what we got to work with. You've got the manual that folds out, tells you everything you need to know. You've got two sets of screws of different lengths, depending on which one fits best in your application. Start with the shorter one first. You've got a bunch of shims. They look like flat washers, but they were stamped out to my own specifications. The number of shims depends on the kit and, and the bike that you're trying to fit. One thing that because of the bike I'm going to demo on, uh, you're not going to see is what I call a nose. Uh, a nose is just something that uh, the screw can go through and the weight will go on over and that, that nose interfaces with the end of the handlebar. It just so happens that this particular bike doesn't need a nose, so the thing that meets the handlebar is one of the shims. No big deal. Another thing you won't see in this, kind of, in, in this particular kit, but which is on some bolt-on kits, is this red thing, which goes in the end of the weight. It makes a sort of a red ring around the bolt, which you might have seen on one of the pictures in the website. Um, the ones with bigger bolts don't have those, and this is one of those. It's a Kawasaki Concourse. You'll also see a pair of lock washers for the bolts you use to put your weight on. So here's what we have to work with today. Let's get to deinstalling the existing bar end weight, which is usually the case on a bolt-on installation. There was a bar end weight there before. The first step is to remove the existing bar end weight. Now it just so happens that I have a throttle lock already installed on my concourse, so I'm going to cheat a little bit because this is what I'm going to put back on. But I can illustrate a couple things you might run into. For instance, a lot of the original equipment bar end weights or bar ends have a little uh, plastic cap that presses into the end, uh, covering the hole that the uh, bolt is under. And the best way to get those out typically is with a ni nice sharp pocket knife. And if the cap goes above the grade, you can often kind of fillet it off, work it underneath the lip, and then pry it out like that. You might have to go around a little bit from different angles and pry it out. And then finally it'll come out and you'll see the bolt head. Sometimes it's a little bit recessed. And then you, you might be able to work it out with... Uh, the blade. Luckily, uh, you won't be reinstalling that with these things. Um, so, you know, you only have to be careful about scuffing it up if you mean to actually remove these again and uh, and put on the originals. Typically, it's an Allen head screw like this. You just give it a good turn. And it'll come right off. So here's what happens next. You take your throttle lock. The manual will say to put a certain number of shims into it. You just stuff them right in there. And then you you put the nose on top of that. When, and like I said, I don't have a nose, but some bikes it'll look like this, or there'll be some other shape of thing you put on top, which is made to interface with the handlebar. So with the, the shims and the nose on top, you then press it against the bar. And what you're looking for is you want a small clearance between the grip and the, the throttle lock. And this obviously has no clearance, so that's no good at all. You'll have to add a shim. Now that, see, you've got that small amount, and so you test it. You see, is it is it pulling on the collar of the throttle lock when you turn it? Uh, answer, no. So this would be ideal. You almost can't see the clearance, but yet there's no friction. That's You, you almost won't get it that good. Uh, it's, uh, it's very rare to see it that good. Just to let you know, sticking in another shim, you press it against, then you have this amount of this, this certain clearance. Now, 
This is not unacceptable. Most bikes will run just fine on that level of clearance. It's about 40 thousandths of an inch. Um, but if you go up one more shim, like that, that's too much for sure. So you'd have to take a shim away. So on mine, it looks like three was just a really lucky shot. It was ideal, uh, which you seldom get. So that's when you take the throttle lock off. You thread a washer onto the small bolt just to see if it's good enough. The small is better than the big, usually. And you screw it right on. Just like that. You can give it a whirl. The throttle snaps back, that's really good. And you can engage the lock, the throttle stays still. You can turn it whichever way you want to make it stay. You have finer adjustments if you really want to change the speed a tiny amount, which is often true. You just grab it with your first two fingers and thumb, and you can, right near the end of the grip, the, there's less rubber to wind up and you can adjust it in really finely and if you want to shut it down you just grab it and twist it. You want to disengage it you just pull the collar out and turn it in the throttle off direction a tiny bit and we're good to go. That's all there is to it.